So if you're in the market to buy a gaming laptop which gives good gaming performance, have good creative workload capabilities, sleek looks and all this while being more portable than most gaming laptops, look no more as here is Asus Tough Dash F15. It provides great portability as compared to traditional Asus Tough series, it is lighter and slimmer. It is available on online channels for 74,000 for 8GB variant as of making this video but this video has 16GB variant which is not available online as of now. The prices may change so click on the link below to get the best deal. So as usual this video has been divided into these chapters to help you navigate to the desired part easily. Starting off with some general specifications. This laptop has Intel's Core i5-12450H with 8 cores and 12 threads, out of which 4 are P cores and 8 are E cores with clock speeds ranging from 2GHz to 4.4GHz and maximum TDP of 45 watts. It has Intel's UHD XE iGPU and it comes with 16GB of DDR5 RAM clocked at 4800MHz. It has RTX 3050 with 4GB of GDDR6V RAM and a maximum TDP of 75 watts which is lower than the maximum TDP of 3050 which is 95 watts which means lower temps but lower performance and it has a 512 gen 3 m.2 nvme ssd now let's take a look at the screen of this laptop it has a 15.6 inch ips panel with an anti glare display with a native resolution of 1920 by 1080p and an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 it has good viewing angles of 170 degrees and has a brightness of 250 nits which is not too good for outdoor usage it has 62.5 percent srgb color gamut which is average for any laptop but not too suitable for tasks which require color accuracy it has a contrast ratio of 1000 by one which is average for gaming laptops it has a gray to gray response time of four milliseconds and it has 144 hertz refresh rate for a smooth gaming experience now let's talk about the special features it has to offer it has a mux switch but no advanced optimus so you'll have to restart the laptop after turning on the mux switch it has only a single zone white light keyboard but at least it has a gamerly wasd keys it has one thunderbolt four port and it comes with ms office 2021 fully activated and Wi-Fi 6AX and Bluetooth 5.1. Now let's see the build quality and design of this laptop. It has an aluminium chassis with white and black color options. It has good hinge quality. The screen does not wobble much even when typing. There is negligible top lid flex and almost no keyboard flex. The screen can easily be opened with one hand using the notch on the top of the screen and it goes back to about 130 degrees. It has a 720p camera on the top lid. It has dimensions of 13.9 inches by 9.9 inches by 0.78 inches and has a weight of 2 kg which is not exactly light like it should be but it is definitely easy to handle due to its slim design and these rounded corners. It has a single zone white light keyboard which is a letdown but it sort of makes up for it with these white WASD keys which bring back that gamely look. It feels okay to type on it, not too good though. It has a decent sized trackpad which is fully clickable and has multi gesture support and a tough branding for no good reason whatsoever. It has two speakers of 2 watt each with a good sound and no bass. The speaker has a support for Dolby Atmos which is somehow supposed to matter but it doesn't. It has a 76 watt hour battery which should last for about 4 to 5 hours with Optimus enabled in normal usage and 1 to 2 hours while gaming. Now let's take a look at the ports that this laptop has to offer. It has two USB type A ports and two USB type C ports. Starting from the left, it has only one USB type A 3.2 gen 1 port which supports data transfer. The rest of the ports lie on the right side which includes one charging jack, one HDMI port which supports display up to 4K 60Hz and is connected to the D GPU, one USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port which supports data transfer and also can be used to charge the laptop with a maximum of 100W power input. It has one Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 Thunderbolt 4 port which supports data transfer and gives display output of 4K 60Hz and is 
connected to the iGPU. A second USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port which also supports data transfer and one audio mic combo jack. Well about the ports, I would like to say that it is below average for laptop nowadays for two main reasons. The first one being, it has only two USB Type-A ports. I mean it's a gaming laptop which usually requires RGB mouse and keyboard for many users to take up to two slots for the whole time. So good luck finding a port for your pen drives or controllers or your printers. Or don't forget to buy a good USB hub along with the laptop using the link below. And the second reason is it should have some ports on the back to give the laptop a cleaner look. All the brands are doing this in their budget laptops so why can't Asus do it? It offers average upgradability options with two slots for DDR5 RAM clocked at 4800 MHz, two M.2 slots for NVMe SSD up to Gen 4, but it does not seem to have an upgradable Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi card for some reason. Here are some performance benchmarks of this laptop. Cinebench R23 scored 11,278 for multi-core and 1669 for single core. Geekbench scores were 8,630 for multi-core and 1635 for single core. PC Mark 10 score was 6566 and 3D Mark Times Spy GPU score was 8790, CPU score was 5155 and the overall score was 5470. Now these are some good scores which enable you to use this laptop for a variety variety of things like 4K editing, streaming, gaming, coding, creative workload but however it is not too good for machine learning and AI work or 3D modeling as it requires minimum 6 GB of VRAM for such work. Here are some gaming benchmarks for you. All these games were tested at 1080p at recommended settings, the DLSS was set to balanced wherever there was an option and ray tracing was turned off. As you can see this laptop held its own in these heavy titles by giving more than playable FPS in these games. Also the temps were really well managed for a thin tough gaming laptop which has a repetition of overheating. There was no thermal throttling whatsoever. I could not run cyberpunk on this laptop for some reason but I feel that this laptop will give playable FPS in that as well. However, I feel this laptop won't be that future proof in 2023 as games are actively supporting ray tracing, frame generation and getting heavier on the hardware generally. Now let's take a look at the competition that is similar laptops available with similar specs. Acer Nitro 5 with i5 12 Gen RTX 3050 at a price of 75,000 but it has DDR4 RAM. Acer Nitro 5 with Ryzen 5 6600H which is a AMD model but it has a DDR5 RAM. Dell G15 is a great replacement for this laptop as it has i5 12 Gen RTX 3050 and DDR5 RAM with similar performance with a much lower price tag of 7700 but it might be a little bit thicker for your liking. MSI Sword has Intel's i5 12 Gen CPU, 16 GB of DDR4 RAM but it has a Gen 4 SSD and RTX 3050 and will cost you around 84,000. Lenovo IdeaPad has good looks with Intel's i5 12 Gen CPU but it has DDR4 RAM and cost about 75,000. HP Victus can also be considered if you're okay with great wobbly screen which comes with Intel's i5 12 Gen but DDR4 RAM and at a price of 73,000. In conclusion, I would like to say that it is a relatively portable gaming laptop with good looks, good performance and good thermals, average port selection, average screen and better build quality than most gaming laptops. However, this may not be very future proof as more and more applications and games are becoming more demanding in 2023 due to the introduction of more powerful 40 series GPU and Intel's 13th gen CPUs. I am really thankful to Creative Laptop Store in Ludhiana, Kocha Market area who had faith in me and provided me the opportunity to work with this laptop. Creative Store has laptops of all brands and variants available for purchase and a very cooperative staff to understand your needs and help you purchase the laptop accordingly. They have really competitive price even if you compare it with online channels. Consider buying your next laptop from Creative Store. If you like the review, please like the video, dislike if you didn't. Tell me about it in the comment section and consider subscribing for more videos like this.